Good morning, everybody. It's great to see everyone here. Uh, today, we'll be uh, presenting our, our Easter program, Salvation Story. But let's go ahead and start first with uh, an opening song. Let's go ahead and stand in worship. Father, we do thank you for this time where we come together to sing your praise, to lift you up, Father. Lord, we thank you, we love you, in Jesus' name. the day in your presence all our fears are washed away but when we see you we find strength to face the day in your presence all our fears are washed away they're washed away
Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and greet each other in Jesus' name. It is always nice to see you greeting one another, and as soon as you've greeted each other, just have a seat. If you're at a loss for words, God bless you is always appropriate. And there's no, nothing greater you can say to someone than God bless you. We are grateful that you are here today, and again, once you've greeted, have a seat. In a few moments, our creative arts department will present Salvation Story, a very special presentation that we know you'll enjoy. And I think you'll be thrilled by it. I know I have been both Friday night and in the first service. I actually look forward to hearing it for the third time. It's very, very well done. And I know you're going to appreciate it. But if you are a guest this morning, and we had several guests in our first service. I'm not sure that I got around in this one. But if you are a guest, and I assume there are guests here, you're a very special person. Thank you for being here today. And we trust that God will speak to you in a very special way. We do have a gift for you. As you leave this morning, there will be a table in the lobby. Actually, if you go straight out the doors, you'll fall over it. It's deliberately placed so that you cannot miss it. So there is a table, and on that table are pins, high-quality pins, and we want you to take one as a gift. We've used several ideas over the years. We've given out keychains and calendars, but the pin always comes back to us as most appreciated. So after a few years, you learn that we have a high-quality pin for you. It's our gift to you. It's our way of saying thank you for coming today. We hope you come back next Sunday. Now, attached to the pin is a card. I have done it myself, so I assure you that even with the information on the back, it does not take more than a minute and a half, and most of us can fill out the card in a minute. And if you want further information on our church, fill out that card and just leave it on the table. We'll mail you information on the church, and you will probably receive a phone call asking if you have any questions or needs and can the church minister to you at this time. So that's what's going to happen. We want you to know that straight up. No one's going to come to your door late in the evening when you're in your robe and pajamas and expect to be asked in. That won't happen. But you will get information in the mail and you will get a phone call asking if there's anything we can do at this time to minister to you or to answer your questions. So that's what to expect if you leave the card. But we want you to take the pin whether you leave the card or not. It's our gift to you. This morning we are very, very grateful that our creative arts department, in having worked so hard and for such a long period of time, is able to present Salvation Story. We sing hymns such as Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Uh, we're fond of those hymns because they are an expression of our experience. That's what we call a gospel song, by the way, is an expression of experience, an expression of the gospel, a result of the gospel. But these hymns that convey great truths about God, and that's what makes a hymn a hymn, by the way. It conveys truth about God, gospel song, our experience of God. But the hymn and the gospel song both speak to us of God's grace and God's love for us. And this morning, as we now present Salvation's story, we will again experience the thrill of knowing that God loves us and Christ died for us, and by being raised from the dead, we can have eternal life. May you be blessed as Matt Hunsaker and our creative arts department present Salvation's story.
third day with power over death, hell, and the grave. And when we say these words, he is risen, we are both sharing our faith with fellow believers and proclaiming to a lost and dying world that he is the hope of our salvation and our eternal life. Today, hope is risen. Second chances are risen. Even the peace that we've always longed for but have never truly known is risen. Because today we celebrate that Jesus Christ our Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. So church, let's stand and together lift up loud praise as we lift worship our risen Savior. Christ the Lord is risen today. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Lift up his name. He is risen indeed. God, we thank you for your great love. You who are rich in mercy have made us alive in Christ. It is by your grace that we are saved.
only the God of the impossible could have made a way for both his justice and his mercy to be satisfied. Only he could make a place where both his love and his wrath could be poured out freely. It was impossible for all of us who are guilty in our sin to be restored back to our father and his family. But God made the impossible once and forever possible at the cross. You have made a place where love and wrath run wild. The penalty and grace are finally reconciled. You have made a way the broken can be whole again. At the cross, your glory bore my shame. At the cross, you suffered in my place. You gave everything for us. At the cross. sacred hill where violence purchased peace the innocent was bound to set the captives free there you made a way the lost are welcome home again Jesus, I thank you for the cross, and thank you for inviting those who are weary to come and lay our burdens down at the foot of the cross.
For it is at the cross that we are reminded that by your death, our debt was paid. And through the power of the resurrection, you were raised to life for our justification. Thank you, God. salvation story was being written and God's plan was unfolding. Christ Jesus took on the nature of a servant and humbled himself by becoming obedient to death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Who bears our shame and grief? The burden on his back, his broken body bleeds. Who else would choose to walk the scorned and cruel path he follows? Rejected and despised, this lonely man of sorrow. Yeah. 
Who else would enter in to face the grave so dark and bitter and rise again to life? Exalted. Oh. 
Are you tired? Jesus wants to give you rest. Are you burdened? He wants to take it from you. It's time that we stop thinking that we can settle our accounts with God on our own, because we can't. And deep down, we know that we can't. And don't think that you've ever gone so far that God can't possibly take you back. He loved you so much that he gave his son to pay for everything that you've done. Jesus paid it all. Come to him. He wants every part of you. Let him have it all. of yesterday and I am held in perfect peace your covenant is keeping me you've been all you said you'd be gone are the doubts that I believe It is finished, it is over, plunge beneath your cleansing flood, every heartache of my own ways you have paid for with your blood, all I was in all.
say goodbye no more and only death will pass away gone are the tears of yesterday Hallelujah, Lord. I praise you that by my, your grace, my sins are gone, and I can rest on your unfailing love. Thank you, Lord. Romans 8, 38 says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor any created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It's higher than the mountains that I face, and it's stronger than the power of the grave. And constant in the trial and the change, this one thing, Remains. It's higher than, it's higher than the mountains that I face, and it's stronger than the power of the grave. And constant in the trial and the change, this one thing remains. This one. Your love never fails and never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love. And on and on it goes.
we praise you. Thank you for the life we have in your Son, Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Hallelujah. Through his steadfast love and his glorious resurrection, we have a living hope, a promise of eternal life. Today, let's stand and proclaim that he is our risen Lord, our risen King, our risen Savior. Thank you, you may be seated. And thank you, Matt, and thank you, Creative Arts Department, Choir, and all those who participated in presenting this thrilling concert to us this morning and last Friday evening, Salvation's Story. This Friday night, today, as you all know, we enter into what is commonly called Holy Week, the week when we reflect upon and think about our Lord Jesus entering Jerusalem and going through the betrayal, the unfair trials, the crucifixion, and of course, next Sunday, the resurrection, we remember. But this Friday evening at 7 o'clock p.m., we will have a Good Friday service, a reflection service, at which time communion will be served and we will reflect upon the suffering of Christ, the cross, the death, and what have you. And then next Sunday morning, of course, we'll reflect upon the uh, resurrection. But this Friday evening at 7 o'clock p.m., our Good Friday service. All three of my children are now grown, but when they were youngsters growing up in the house, I think all three of them at one time or another asked, why do we call it Good Friday? Shouldn't it be referred to as Bad Friday? Well, I guess there's a sense in which it was bad. But there's another sense in which it was very, very good for us, the beneficiaries of Christ's death, his substitutionary death. He died in my place so that I might have life. The offering that we received this morning is for the ministry God has given us together here at the chapel in Marlboro. Thank you for your faithfulness in the giving of tithes and of offerings. Shall we pray? Dear Father, as we give our tithes and offerings to you today, it is with the gratefulness that comes from knowing that salvation is real, that Christ is real, that history is real, and it speaks of this event when God became a man. And it informs us of how God has worked to redeem us and to bring us to himself. And history is alive today as we look at the lives of people who have been changed by the power of the Holy Spirit 
upon their belief in the risen Savior. As we give today, it is with the prayer that you will bless these gifts and use them for your glory. And this we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for your gift this morning. We're not going to have a scripture reading this morning. I'll save that in my prepared thoughts for next week. But I do want to send you home with a, a brief devotional thought regarding the season. In the third, uh, third chapter of John's Gospel, we read of the familiar episode where Nicodemus approaches Jesus, a man of the Pharisees, he is called, one who has spent his entire life studying the rules and the regulations of Judaism as well as the Torah, the law. And he knows those rules and regulations later to be called the Talmud. He knows them very well. And this man came to Jesus by night. Having observed Jesus, having listened to the words of Jesus, and having seen the results of Jesus' ministry, his words and his works in the lives of others, Nicodemus says to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these things that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answered and said to him, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus goes on then to elaborate on that phrase, born again. He puts definition to it, allowing Nicodemus to know that it comes from God and allowing Nicodemus to know that it is a result of belief in Jesus as the Redeemer, the Messiah, the Savior. Nicodemus becomes a follower of Jesus and is one of those who is responsible for his body when it's removed from the cross. That phrase, born again, is an interesting one, isn't it? I read, I've not seen it, but I read where there is an adver advertisement on TV where a well-known jeans manufacturer shows Christian baptism taking place, baptism by immersion, and they show an individual, a man walking into the water wearing a pair of their famous jeans and he's baptized and he comes out. The camera is focused on the jeans. A second man walks into the water wearing this pair of famous name brand jeans. He's baptized, brought up from the water, walks out, and he's still wearing these jeans. And then a lady walks into the water and the camera focuses on her jeans and they're not name brand, or at least they're not this name brand, they're no name jeans, the kind I buy and wear. She goes into the water, she's immersed, she comes up out of the water, and as she's walking out of the water, suddenly she's wearing the name brand jeans. 
And a voice comes across the commercial and says, born again. In the increasingly hostile secularization that's taking place in our country, we should not be surprised that advertisers are now ridiculing one of the important exercises of the Christian faith, baptism, in order to sell genes. And that does disappoint us. It does. But it also tells us how far away people's minds have gotten from the Bible and the truth of what Jesus said when he reminded Nicodemus, you must be born again. The increasingly secularized society in which we live really gives us an opportunity, and I hope you understand that. Are we concerned and burdened by it? Sure, of course we are. Do we think that in time we may face persecution? Perhaps. But we remember the phrase that is still true, the darker the night, the brighter the light. And so we have an opportunity to shine brightly for Jesus. And while people continue to deceive themselves, and engage in self-deception, telling them everything's okay, everything's okay, everything's all right. They know, and eventually they confess, everything's not all right. Something is wrong. And when they finally come to that place, they're receptive to the message that is the truth. You must be born again. The shopping mall has become the modern-day cathedral, has it not? The parking mall parking lots are filled on Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon with people looking to be born again. Whether it be through the purchase of a new pair of jeans or another garment, or whether it be through the promise of a toiletry, a perfume, a cosmetic that says, try this and you'll be changed changed for the better. Or another product, try this, you'll be changed, changed for the better. They're trying hard to change for the better. People grasp for transformation, change. The transformation and the change that ultimately only God can give. The cosmetic can hide the wrinkles in our skin for a few hours. But only God can smooth out the wrinkles in our heart forever. And so I remind you today that it was Jesus who said, you must be born again. And let us quit dabbling with the trinkets and the toys of the world in hoping to find change. And let us grasp on to that which is eternal that which God gives us, life through Jesus Christ. Let us pray. And as we conclude our, prayer, our uh, service this morning with prayer, perhaps there are friends here who have not made a commitment of faith to the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and have questions about that or a desire to do that. Following the benediction, there will be at the front Rick and Linda Grissom, our deacon, and his wife, our deaconess. They are here to pray with you and to show you from the Bible how you may become a Christian. Perhaps you're here and you've made that commitment of faith to Christ and have questions about joining the church. They'll answer those questions. Or you have a, a real need in your life and you want prayer. They're here to pray with you and to share those burdens with you. Dear Father, we are grateful today for the presentation we've heard in song and script, in word, regarding salvation's story. And we know it's all about Jesus. Every song that was sung, every word that was shared, every script that was shown up on the screen was about Jesus. Jesus the man. Jesus, his death, Jesus, his resurrection, Jesus, his everlasting love. Hallelujah. What a Savior. May we rejoice in knowing Jesus today 
and every day. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide upon us all till our Savior come and evermore. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed.